Mani Hdada, whoever is guided, nafsi. Whoever is guided, he is only guided for himself. This is an ayah we need to internalize. And especially us coming from the Desi community. I tell you, subhanAllah, majority of our day, aksarul waqt is on what will people say about me? Right? What will people say? Right? What will they say? Allah Ta'ala says, Mani htada, fa innama yahtadi li nafsihi. Whoever is guided, you guide it for yourself. On Qiyamah, this is the thing, right? Yawma yafirul mar'u min akhi wa ummi wa abi. The day when a person will flee from his brother, his mother and his father, his wife and his children. On that day, there's no more dad, I need this, I need this, I need this. What, you know, Husband, I need this, I need this. Mom, dad, I need these things. None of that on Qiyamah. On Qiyamah, everyone is busy. Everyone is busy. They have no time for you. So I want to remind myself or everyone, inshallah, ta'ala, you and I will stand on myself on the day of judgment. I'm not going to rely on you. You're not going to rely on me. If Allah Ta'ala allows someone to get shafa'ah, intercession, that's from his tawfiq and his fadl. But you and I on Qiyamah have to make sure that I go to Jannah. Whoever misguides, he's misguided himself. That Allah just says the captured point, right? The most important point to capture from this ayah. No one will bear the sins of another. Allah Ta'ala says. No one will bear the sins of the other. This again, refutation of the Yahud. Because their whole thing is, we're being punished because of our forefathers. Allah says, no, 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 no. no. Don't misunderstand. You're not being punished because of the Jews of the past. Allah says you're being punished because you're happy with what they did. You know, SubhanAllah, this is the mistake they're making. The mistake is not the fact that your forefathers commit sins and now therefore their guna, we're taking the burden of their guna. There's no burdening of anyone's sins, right? SubhanAllah, this is the thing, right? If my father was someone who was bad, may Allah to protect and forgive, Ya Rabb. But if my father, hypothetically speaking, was a bad person, I'm responsible for myself under the judgment. Right? How many people, SubhanAllah, they have bad generations. MashaAllah, they become the wali of the time. Allah has made many people like that, mashallah. It doesn't matter where you come from. Really, in Islam, your, your nasab doesn't have that much impact on where you'll be on Qiyamah. It really doesn't. Because in reality, if you want to be a great wali of Allah, you can do it yourself. Allah has said, Yahud, brother Yahud, brother Jew, Jew brother, and Mr. Jacob, right, whatever. I don't know. They don't know any other Jewish names. All right, so, brother Jacob, listen, it's not because it's not of the people before. All I want you to say is, you condemn what they did. That they worship the calf. Do you know the calf story? The golden calf? They worship that calf, right? The golden idol that they made. You disobeyed Allah. You, these people did wrong. Admit they did wrong. And accept that they did wrong. This is something they will never do. Because they love their people so much. They love their forefathers so much. That even the haram they love. And even after they did the wrong, they'll say they're still chosen people of God. So what am I supposed to do? You're happy with guna, you're happy with haram, you're happy with the disobedience of Allah. So what can we say, subhanAllah? This is why I tell everyone, look, we come from difficult communities and difficult areas. We very much lived around Hindu communities, etc. We just say, look, whatever I did is wrong. But I'm not with that. That's not me. That's not my qawm. That's not who I am. I'm a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And I will go with whatever I have and they will go with whatever they have. Lakum deenukum deen. For them is your deen, for us is our deen. Bas, right? This is the way we should be. Wala taziru waziratun wizra ukhra. And Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّا he, he really, mashallah, this ayah is a beautiful ayah. وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبَعَثَ رَسُولَ Allah says, we will never punish. Allah said, I made a rule on me. Allah, Rabbul Alameen says, I made a rule on me. We will never punish. حَتَّى until نَبَعَثَ until we send a messenger. Allah says, it is my honor to you, O Jewish community and Christian community and any other community. Allah says, it is my honor to you that I won't destroy you. You commit crime after crime after crime. And then until I send the messenger of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi to you all. Thereafter Allah Ta'ala says, once he gives you the message, the da'wah of Islam, the deen of Islam, and then afterwards you have, our, you, have the, you have to choose or you don't have to choose. You accept or you reject. At that moment, now the punishment can come at any time. Okay? And even then, Allah is so kind. I want you to think about Sayyidina Nuh Alayhi Salaam. Nuh Alayhi Salaam comes and he gives da'wah ila Allah. Such strong da'wah he gives. For how long? 950 years of da'wah. Allah didn't destroy them right when Nuh alayhi came. Allah gave them 950 years to think about it, reflect, make the dabbur, think, and try, and then accept or not accept. And thereafter, 950 years later, Allah says, now we destroy. SubhanAllah, I, imagine, just give, hypothetical scenario, right? I send to you my son. I'm just giving you an example, right? I send to you my son, and SubhanAllah, I tell him to give you a beautiful message. And he comes with gifts, and all these mitai, and all these sweets, and all these nice things he gives you. And he says, I came from my dad to give you this beautiful message. And then what do the people do? They will take him and then they'll, they'll spit on his face. They'll slap him. They'll hit him. They'll injure him. They rip up all the toys. Rip up all the gifts. They hurt him and abuse him. 
Subhanallah, right? And then the son comes back to me and tells me, Father, this is what happened to me. I, I will come to your house. I'll shoot you down. <laughs> you don't like you Allah. You don't have to wait. There's no 911, right? Really, right? Nothing. I'd be so angry. How could you do this to my family? You did this to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, subhanAllah, they tried to assassinate Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Multiple times they tried to assassinate Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They tried to kill him, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They tried to do so many terrible things to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from His kindness and Fadl and Karam says, "Give them more time." Who knows who accepts Islam from them? Subhanallah, could you imagine? The amazing Allah Taala is right. Allah Taala says, "O ma kunna muadzibin hatta nabaat the Rasul." And still we send a messenger, and thereafter they can be punished, or thereafter they can be saved. Allah Taala knows. Allah Taala says, "But He gives us a sign, and this is what you need to know for our time." I tell you this because I want to say almost every community from Muslim communities have some type of zulm that's happening. In India, it's very very well known. May Allah grant afia to them and grant them ya Allah the the jaza hasan. Make it easy for them, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Same thing with the area of Sudan, right? We know this, Mashan, Somalia, in, in Philistine. I can mention country after country, and we'll see that there is always something there. But I want you all to note this one I am Sutul Isra. If anyone asks you, why is it that these people are doing all these haram, right? Now that right now is Bangladeshi politics, man. Subhanallah, this is a headache and a half, man. Subhanallah, I don't want to get into this right now. I have to leave early today, so I'm trying to make this short. Or إِذَا aradana when we want a nuhlika qarya. Allah Ta'ala says, when we want to destroy a village. Amadna, Allah says, we command mutra fiha. We command the, the extra, extravagant ones, the luxurious ones, the ones who are jabbar, the ones who are fusaq. Allah says, we command the transgressors, and we, congr- we command the evil ones from that community. Fafasaku fiha, they do more haram. Okay, let's read that again. Allah says, when we, when we want to destroy a community, we command the, the leaders and the celebrities and the extravagant ones from the community to do more haram. Right? What happens then? So now these people engage in fisk. These can be people that can engage in haram. Then after they have followers. So what do the followers are doing? If they do it, we do it. So then what happens? The whole community starts doing haram. And now when they commit this much crimes and tyranny and atrocities and all this dhulm, Allah says, then the word has become true upon them. Allah says, we destroy them entirely. People are asking the same question again and again. What's happening in Israel right now, in the area of Israel right now, in the area of Palestine right now, May Allah ta'ala afiya, nusra ya Allah. What's happening there, people are looking at this and saying, oh, why, why, why is this? I said, no, 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 Allah ta'ala has a plan. Those who died from there will become shuada. And those who are alive, inshallah, will receive great, great rewards from Allah. You have no idea what fadl Allah ta'ala is going to give them, mashallah, because of their sabr for waiting in that area, defending Masul Aqsa when you and I are here in this country, not able to defend, they are there defending, subhanallah. What a great ni'mah from Allah ta'ala, really. You and I would be envious. We would say, Ya Allah, I wish I had their position on Qiyamah. Could you imagine what position they have? Thereafter, the fasiqeen, though, the fusaq, the evil people, Allah says, continue to do haram. Come full with sins from before me. When that word has been reached, Allah says, we'll destroy all of them. Allah says, if you don't believe me, Allah says, how many communities have we destroyed from after Nuh Allah says, count. Take a, take a count. Think about how many communities were there. Make fikr one moment. Let's think about how many people were there. They had lives like us. They lived 30, 40, 50 years. They had children. They had wealth. They had families. They had homes. They had everything, subhanAllah. Aad and Samud, more than you and I can imagine dunya, they had the dunya. You know, subhanAllah. Have you ever looked at the pyramids? You ever wonder like what kind of great monument that is? What is what is a pyramid? What is it supposed to be? What, what is it in reality? It is the place of the burial of the Pharaoh, right? The Pharaoh's qabr, right? That is his qabr. SubhanAllah, he has a bigger qabr than all of us will ever have. Our house is not even as big as his cover. Could you imagine what kind of mausoleum he has, right? This is his his cover stand. This is literally a stand that he has, you know? Allah Akbar. You know, I don't have anything close to that. Do you imagine the power and wealth of these people they used to have? Where are they now? SubhanAllah, Muhammad Ali went for Egypt, right? SubhanAllah, he sent me the body of, they took the picture of Firaun. He went there, SubhanAllah, and you're not supposed to take pictures inside, but his father was able to sneak in a picture. So he sent me the picture of Firaun. I under I was like thinking to myself like did you give me a gift or did you <laughs> give me something? But Subhanallah, what a reminder Allah has left. The the zalim of the time, zalimu zamanihi, right? Or fasiqu zamanihi, the most evil person of his time, right? The Firaun, the actual Firaun, haqiqatan huwa Firaun. You know he was a Firaun, he is a Firaun. This person Subhanallah, look how weak and brittle he became, how lowly he became. Imagine what punishment we receive right now in the adab of the barzakh right now. May Allah save us and protect us. But this is a reminder Allah is giving us that look, you don't live here forever. Don't think about this world so much like that. This is a reminder for Surah Al-Isla. It's not Shaquille who's telling you something right here. It's Allah is telling you that look, design and, and make your life in a way that the hereafter will be successful for you. 
This is the next ayah, inshallah, we'll finish on this one. It's something to think about. Man kan yurid al Allah says, whoever intends. I'm sorry. Wa kafa bihi bi dhunubi ibadi khabira masira. I'll reflect on that next week, inshallah. It's a very important part. I want to think about it deeply, though, before we come together with it. Allah says, well, man kan yurid al Whoever wants the, the rush thing, whoever wants the haste thing, you know, expedited. You know, expedited shipping, uh, Amazon Prime shipping, right? Whoever wants the two-day, ajila, the quick thing. Whoever wants the rush thing, the quick thing. Ajanna, meaning what is the quick thing here? Referring to the dunya, okay? Whoever wants this dunya. Allah says, ajalnahu, we will rush it for him. If he really wants it, we'll give it to him all here. Fiha, in it, manasha, from what we want. Liman nurid, for whoever we want, Allah says. It's an ajib thing. Allah says, whoever wants dunya, Allah says, we will give him, not based on what he wants, but what on what we want. Allah says, inka irada nahi hai, wo mera, meri irada hai. It's my intention, Allah Ta'ala says. My intention, I will give whatever he, what, I, what I want for this person. Now think about that, subhanAllah, Allah says, you might think he's, he's earning. Allah says, no, 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 that's from me. And I give him only a certain amount of the dunya, I don't give him all of it. Thumma ja'annanahu jahannam. Allah says, thereafter we give him jahannam. Ajib. Subhanallah. Allah says that he can enjoy in the dunya, he wants the dunya. That was his whole niyyah to get the dunya. So Allah said, I give him based on whatever I want. And thereafter we make for him, yaslaha madmuma madhura. We will give him jahannam. He will be disgraced and he will be debased. He will be lowly in jahannam, Allah Ta'ala says. This is the hereafter, right? Allah Ta'ala says, whoever wants the expedited thing, the quick thing. You want the dunya, Allah says, I'll give you dunya. If your intention and niyyah is for dunya, Allah says, no problem, I will give you dunya. وَمَنْ أَعْرَادَ الْآخِرَةِ then Allah says, whoever wants the hereafter. And he does the proper work for the hereafter. And he's a believer. Allah says, whoever wants from the hereafter, Allah doesn't say we give him whatever we want. Allah Ta'ala says, Allah Ta'ala says, that person's endeavor and his struggle and his sacrifice is such a praiseworthy sacrifice, Allah Ta'ala says. Appreciated sacrifice. Mashkur means, subhanAllah, something that Allah Ta'ala is grateful to you. He is appreciative of you. He values what you're doing. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala says, whatever amal you're doing, Allah Ta'ala says, He loves it. Now, Subhanallah, when you pray salah, when you do siyam, when you do roza, when you do itikaf, you do any ibadah, tell yourself, Alhamdulillah, my Allah loves this ibadah right now. And Allah Ta'ala doesn't say, Liman nasha, liman nuri. He doesn't say, I give you whatever we want. Allah says, you get something, mashallah, and I'm going to multiply what you wanted. Because you and I would want from the hereafter. Now I tell you, Subhanallah. So a person will think about the hudu na'in. Inshallah, tabarakah. I want to say this because no sister speak. Right, you think about the Hudu 9, you're thinking, oh, she's going to be this beautiful. Now, will she be as beautiful as you thought? No, 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 no. Liman nasha, liman nuri, no, 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 no. It's not whatever you thought it would be, it's whatever Allah Ta'ala wants it to be. Now, subhanAllah, you think about the, the gardens and palaces of Jannah, and you tell us that Jannah is going to be so extraordinary, so beautiful, mashallah. Even the place in the Qabr, you think like, subhanAllah, if he's a mu'min, a Muslim, he'll be such a beautiful place in there. Wallahi, your fikr and my fikr has nothing to the reality of it. That's why Sayyidina Abda, Ibn Abbas said, when you think of Rumman, when you think about a pomegranate, he says that the pomegranate of Jannah is nothing like what you thought about the pomegranate in this world. He said the only thing that resembles this world in the hereafter is Asma, it's just the name. When you reach the hereafter, then you say, Allah, wow, that was a river. That was a Jannah. That was a Hurun Ain. That was what those things were. Allah says, Allah says, we gave these and we gave these. Min rabbik, from the blessings and the grace of your Lord. And the gifts and the bounties of your Lord are not limited, Allah Ta'ala says. Then Allah Ta'ala makes you think about one last thing about this situation. Allah says, Unzur ba'd ala ba'd. Allah says, look at how we have given virtue, we have increased some over others. Allah Ta'ala tells us to think about it. Allah Ta'ala says to think about how a person has billions of dollars here. Allah Ta'ala tells you to think about how the lowly people have nothing here. Okay? What is the difference between them? Is it a big difference? Huge difference there is between a person who has a house versus not having a house. A person who has a car versus not having a car. A person who has family versus not having family. Billions of dollars, could you imagine? You know the zakat for a billion dollars? Does anyone know the zakat for a billion dollars? I just tell you this, one because people think, that, oh my God, I'm giving a thousand or two thousand dollars, three thousand, whatever, right? SubhanAllah, I'm telling you. Allah Akbar, the billion, billionaire has to give 2.5% of his wealth, right? Of his excess, right? That's like I like 10 billion, 10 million dollars. Like, so, like that's his zakat. MashaAllah, you could save a whole, MashaAllah, Burlington must have 10 million dollars. You know, like you start thinking, what can you do with that much money? Allah Akbar, right? This man has a lot. 
Allah Ta'ala says, how you want, Allah Ta'ala says, Unzur kayfa faddalna ba'du ala ba'd. Look at how we made some of them greater than others, give them virtue over others. Walal akhiratu akbaru darajat. Allah says, but the hereafter surely has greater statuses than that. So now, subhanAllah, what I want you to think about is, people are thinking, oh, I just enter Jannah, I'll get like the bare minimum Jannah, the lower level of Jannah. The Rasulullah Sallallahu said, that the lowest level of ten, Jannah, the person gets 10 of this world. All right, so it's extraordinary. What could that even mean? 10 of this world, this 10 of this dunya is incredible, subhanAllah. A person thinking to satisfy themselves on that. Allah Ta'ala says, Walal akhirat akbar darajat. But Allah says, look at the poor person here, and look at the billionaire here, look at the difference in between. Would you want to be the poor person? No one want to be the poor person. You look at the billionaire. Would you not want to be the billionaire? Allah says, yes, of course you want to be the billionaire. Allah says, the hereafter has even bigger statuses than this. When you look at your Jannah, you look at the Jannah to fit those Jannah, you say, Allah, this is literally nothing compared. I can't even compare. There's no word to compare what's between. Allah says, don't satisfy yourself with the low. Think about, inshallah, make hasib of yourself, make muhasab of yourself, and tell yourself, ya Allah, how can I get to Jannah to those Allah? You want to know a very easy trick? Ready for the cheat code? I always give you a cheat code at the end of these, right? Raise your hand, say, Allah, I want Jannah to fit those. I don't know any greater cheat code than this one. That you say, Allah, I have no amal that is good enough, but your fadl and your karam is greater than whatever I could do. And you say, Allah, I raise my hands, I want Jannah to fit those with Nabi Muhammad Wasallam. Allah from his fadl and karam will give. Don't, don't doubt Allah Ta'ala. Okay? So I remind, remind, is my reminder for myself, for everyone, inshallah. And alhamdulillah, we'll continue from next week, inshallah. Inshallah, allow us to live a life that is pleasing for Allah, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and give us, inshallah, the general for those with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.